Welcome to Nick's Defense Channel. If you like our videos, do not want to miss our new uploads and would like to see our channel grow, please hit the subscribe button. After you watch this video, please check out our detailed report on the 30-year shipbuilding plan, the Battle Force 2045 of the U.S. Navy, where we listed every shipbuilding project in progress and their completion dates. You can find the link in the description below. The Zumwalt class destroyer is a class of three United States Navy guided missile destroyers designed as multi mission stealth ships with a focus on land attack. It is a multi role class that was designed for secondary roles of surface warfare and anti aircraft warfare and originally designed with a primary role of naval gunfire support. These ships are classed as destroyers, but they are much larger than any other active destroyer or cruiser. The vessel's distinctive appearance results from the design requirement for a low radar cross section. The Zumwalt class has a wave piercing tumble home hull form whose sides slope inward above the waterline, which dramatically reduces RCS by returning much less energy than a conventional flare hull form. The appearance has been compared to that of the historic USS Monitor and her famous antagonist CSS Virginia. The class has an integrated electric propulsion system that can send electricity from its turbo generators to the electric drive motors or weapons. The total ship computing environment infrastructure, automated firefighting systems, and automated piping rupture isolation. The class is designed to require a smaller crew and to be less expensive to operate than comparable warships. The lead ship is named Zumwalt for Admiral Elmo Zumwalt and carries the hull number DDG 1000. Originally, 32 ships were planned, with $9.6 billion research and development costs spread across the class as costs overran estimates. The quantity was reduced to 24, then to 7, and finally to 3, significantly increasing the cost per ship to $4.24 billion and well exceeding the per unit cost of a nuclear powered Virginia class submarine. In April 2016, the total program cost was $20.5 billion. The dramatic per unit cost increases eventually triggered a Nunn McCurdy amendment breach and cancellation of further production, so the Navy reverted to building more Arley Burke destroyers. On the 11th of February 2009, full rate production officially began on the first Zumwalt class destroyer. Construction on the second ship of the class. Michael Monsoor began in March 2010. The keel for the first Zumwalt class destroyer was laid on the 17th of November 2011. This first vessel was launched from the shipyard at Bath, Maine on the 29th of October 2013. The Navy planned for Zumwalt to reach initial operating capability in 2016. The second ship, Michael Monsoor, was commissioned in 2019, and the third ship, Lyndon B. Johnson, was to have reached IOC in 2021. Despite being 40% larger than an Arleigh Burke class destroyer, the radar cross section is more akin to that of a fishing boat, according to a spokesman for Naval Sea Systems Command. The tumble home hull and composite deckhouse reduce radar return. Overall, the destroyer's angular build makes it 50 times harder to spot on radar than an ordinary destroyer. The acoustic signature is comparable to that of the Los Angeles class submarines, water sleeting along the sides along with passive cool air induction in the MAC, reduces infrared signature. The composite deckhouse encloses much of the sensors and electronics. To improve detection in non-combat situations by other vessels, such as traversing busy shipping channels or operating in inclement weather, the Navy is testing adding onboard reflectors to improve the design's radar visibility. The usefulness of the stealth features has been questioned. The class's role was to provide naval surface fire support, which requires the ship to be in typically crowded near shore waters, where such large and distinctive ships can be tracked visually, and any surface ship becomes non stealthy when it begins firing guns or missiles. The advanced gun system is a 155mm naval gun, two of which are installed in each ship. This system consists of an advanced 155mm gun and its long-range land attack projectile. This projectile is a rocket with a warhead fired from the AGS gun. The warhead has an 11 kg bursting charge and has a circular error probable of 50 meters. This weapon system has a range of 83 nautical miles. Lyndon B. Johnson, 
The last Zumwalt is being considered for the installation of a railgun in place of one of the 155mm naval guns after the ship is built. This is feasible because the installed Rolls-Royce turbine generators are capable of producing 78 megawatts, enough for the electrically powered weapon. The peripheral vertical launch system is an attempt to avoid intrusion into the prized center space of the hull while reducing the risk of loss of the entire missile battery or of the ship in a magazine explosion. The system consists of pods of VLS cells distributed around the outer shell of the ship with a thin steel outer shell and a thick inner shell. The design of the PVLS directs the force of any explosion outward rather than into the ship. Additionally, this design reduces the loss of missile capacity to the affected pod only. Two spots are available on a large aviation deck with a hangar capable of housing two full-size SH-60 helicopters. Boats are handled within a stern-mounted boat hangar with ramp. The boat hangar's stern location meets high sea state requirements for boat operations. Each vessel is equipped with an EN Spy 3, X-Band, Active Array, Multifunction Radar. The ship's common display system is nicknamed KEDS. Sailors operate KEDS via trackballs and specialized button panels, with the option to the interface by using touchscreens. The Zumwalts use an integrated power system, which is a modern version of a turbo electric drive system. Electric power is provided by two Rolls Royce MT30 gas turbines, 35.4 megawatts each, driving Curtis Wright electric generators. Zumwalt PLAS cells can launch the SM-2 standard missile, but the ships have no requirement for ballistic missile defense. The tubes are long and wide enough to incorporate future interceptors, and although the ship was designed primarily for literal dominance and land attack, Raytheon contended that they could become BMD capable with few modifications. DDG-1000 design provides 80 Mk 57 vertical launching system cells. Each VLS cell can be quad-packed with RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles. This gives a maximum theoretical load of 320 ESSM missiles. The ESSM is considered a point defense weapon not generally used for fleet area defense. In October 2020, Zumwalt conducted a successful live test launch of an SM-20 air defense missile from its Mk 57 vertical launch system. The ship will start fleet service this year. Michael Monsoor, DDG-1001, is going through testing at San Diego. General Dynamics Bath is building Lyndon B. Johnson, DDG-1002. There remains questions and criticism over the cost and functionality of the Zumwalt class destroyers as well. Mike Friedenberg analyzed the program for national review after Zumwalt broke down in the Panama Canal in November 2016, and he concluded that the ship's problems are emblematic of a defense procurement system that is rapidly losing its ability to meet our national security needs. Friedenberg went on to detail problems relating to the skyrocketing costs, lack of accountability, unrealistic goals, a flawed concept of operations, the perils of designing a warship around stealth, and the failure of the advanced gun system. He concludes, The Zumwalt is an unmitigated disaster. Clearly it is not a good fit as a frontline warship, with its guns neutered, its role as a primary anti-submarine warfare asset in question, its anti-air warfare capabilities inferior to those of our current workhorse, the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, and its stealth not nearly as advantageous as advertised. The Zumwalt seems to be a ship without a mission. So, after hearing about the advanced features of the Zumwalt class destroyers and the negative comments, what are your opinions? Do you think these destroyers are a game changer for the naval battles, or is it a completely useless and expensive miscalculation? Do you think US Navy should procure more of these beasts? Please leave a comment with your opinions under this video. We are always looking forward to see what our viewers think. Thank you for watching Nick's Defense Channel.